In the vast landscape of rock, few things could genuinely astonish Jimmy Page, a luminary whose work with Led Zeppelin laid foundational stones for countless rock bands that followed. Amidst a sea of imitators and the occasional band that struck a chord with his blues-oriented heart, Page found himself profoundly moved upon encountering the vocal prowess of Paul Rogers. Before the formation of Led Zeppelin, Page had already collaborated with notable vocalists, such as Keith Relf from The Yardbirds. setting a high bar for what he sought in a singer. His quest for the perfect voice led him to consider talents like Terry Reid and Steve Marriott. for what would eventually become Led Zeppelin before finally settling on Robert Plant. The search for authentic blues vocalists wasn't arduous for Page, especially during Britain's blues boom, which contrasted with America's summer of love. This era saw the rise of gritty, soulful voices, a trait often associated with American artists now emerging from the UK. Amidst this scene, a supergroup named Free began to take shape distinguished by Paul Kossoff's guitar virtuosity, reminiscent of Page's own. However, it was Paul Rogers' unique vocal tone, a blend of Janis Joplin's raspiness and Steve Marriott's soul, that truly captivated. The untimely passing of Kossoff due to a drug overdose didn't spell the end for Rogers' voice within the rock panorama. The formation of Bad Company, featuring talents like Boz Burrell and Mick Ralphs, marked a new beginning. Under Page's label, Swan Song, Bad Company emerged as a formidable force in the blues rock genre, a testament to Rogers' unparalleled vocal ability, acknowledged by Page himself. Despite not being directly involved with Bad Company, Page recognised Rogers' voice as a defining element of the band's success. We decided that the band was going to be called Bad Company and we had a bunch of songs together. A friend of mine worked with Led Zeppelin. Well, he came around to visit me at my cottage in the country and he said, you know, uh, you guys should call Peter Grant. So I said, well, OK. I mean, I don't think the manager of the biggest band in the world is going to want to talk to me, but OK, I'll give him a call. So I called him up and I said, hello, Peter, um, got a band here and uh, are you interested? You know, and he says, well, I'm interested in you. I said to him, well, I come with a band, Peter. There's four of us and we're called Bad Company. And that's like it, right? And, I said, and he said, well, I don't know about the name. <laughs> Mick and I were determined it was going to be called Bad Company. We thought it was like, you know, the perfect name for a band. So we stuck to our guns and Peter became our manager. Page, by then a global rock icon, admired Rogers' contribution to Bad Company, highlighting his voice as the linchpin of the band's identity. Following Led Zeppelin's disbandment, Rogers played a pivotal role in revitalizing Page's career, leading to the creation of the firm during Bad Company's hiatus. Rogers' vocal style, characterized by a deep, blues-infused tonality, not only influenced his contemporaries but also presaged the vocal techniques that would define alternative rock and grunge. Songs like Bad Company and Shooting Star showcased a vocal depth that, though predating the grunge era, foreshadowed the emotive power of voices like Eddie Vedder's. Rogers' impact on rock vocals therefore extends far beyond his immediate sphere, seeding innovations that would blossom in the years to come.